Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Wednesday, uh, November 2nd. Yeah, I'm not going to talk too much about the, the Fed today because, you know, I, I really think that's kind of irrelevant. I'll, I'll say a couple of things. I, I will say this at the outset that the sharp sell off, that, that's all going to be retraced. The market's going to come back from that. You know, that was a hyper emotional reaction. It was it was totally zombie, uh, um, reflexive selling. You know, I knew that was going to happen as soon as Powell went to the uh, press conference. He was going to dump all over the market and he's going to say something like which he said that, you know, we're not even close to ending rate hikes. Uh, and everything is driven by this you know, psychosis, monetarism, and, and psychotic uh, monetary view, everything. We know this, and I, I've been through this like a million times. Um, the only thing I'll say is that Fed rate hikes now have a diminishing negative effect from the standpoint of net, uh, the discounting of, of net present value, right? Uh, but they have an increasing positive effect on interest income transfers. So I actually created a graph. I sent it out to my subscribers. It basically shows that each 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 successive rate hike now and you can even they could even go 1%. I mean, you know, basically we have not even after today's comments by Powell, there was no really no change in Fed fund futures uh with respect to what they have built in as the the expectation for uh, the next policy moves. I mean, there's still you know 75 basis points today. We saw that uh, it's still a 50 basis point rate hike in December. Uh, 75 basis point rate hike probability probability excuse me went up a little bit. It's a 25 basis point rate hike in February. So you know that's where it was before the, today. And that's basically still where it is. But uh, even if the Fed goes 75 in December, I mean, even if it goes 1%, 100 basis points in December, it could go 100 basis points in February. Uh, the, the percentage increase from the prior level of interest rates now is, is a diminishing slope. It's a declining slope, which means that the negative impact from interest rates, it's diminishing. But the positive impact with respect to fiscal transfers, that's going up. I, I mean, you have right now in the first four weeks of this fiscal year, 2023, we have $11.2 billion was added just from the discount on Treasury bills. Okay? And that compares to $153 million at the same time last year. I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary, gigantic increase year over year. And that's just the discount on T-bills. That's not eventually what we're going to see in uh, interest income on, on treasuries, on tips, you know, all that stuff. So, I mean, you know, that's just in its very early stages. So, I mean, just to sum up right now, if you're selling based on these, you know, stupid comments by Powell, and I, I do uh, believe they're stupid because he said something too. He said, if we over tighten, it gives us room to um, support the economy later on. So this guy thinks like he has to reload, like the Fed has to reload, like in order, he thinks like that statement shows that he doesn't even, you know, he doesn't understand even the role or the function or the powers, if you want to use that term, of the central bank. I mean, here he is running with negative cash flow, okay? No problem on that. You know, still conducting policy with negative cash flow, but yet at the same time making a statement which makes it sound like they got to build up some kind of, you know, uh, a cushion so that they could cut rates again at some point in the future. So, like, it, it's complete idiocy, all right? It's just a guy who's a lawyer who got put there for political reasons, and 
you know, it's not just exclusive to Powell. I mean, he's he's the Fed chair, but I mean, all these guys, I mean, how many times can I say it over and over? I mean, all these guys, they just adhere to an orthodoxy, and it's not even the Fed, it's, it's throughout central banking. They just adhere to an orthodoxy that has been proven wrong over and over and over again, and they just keep doubling down and tripling down on the same thing. I don't pay any attention to it. I understand, you know, there's going to be behavioral reactions because the people are, they, they, they've been brainwashed into believing that, that this is the only thing that counts. I mean, it's the only thing anyone ever talks about. Hey, have you ever, and today's, I have to laugh kind of at today's activity because <clears throat> it reminded me a lot. I don't know if you guys ever saw the movie Trading Places with Eddie Murphy and, um, Oh, who else was in there? Uh, it was a guy who used to be on Saturday Night Live. But anyway, Eddie Murphy, uh, Trading Places. It came out in the 80s, and Eddie Murphy was just kind of this homeless guy, and uh, he was picked up. He was, he, you know, he got into this um, scheme uh, where they were going to teach him, the, the owners of this big commodity trading firm, Duke and Duke, they were going to prove that they could take any person off the street, even a homeless guy, and teach him and, um, y you know, uh, make him a success. And at the end, uh, you know, without going through the whole entire plot, at the end, there was a scene that was filmed on the commodity exchange. Actually, it's where I used to work at the, at the uh, commodity exchange in the, in the World Trade Center, you know, the, before it got blown up. Uh, and in fact, I, I knew some of the guys in that scene. They were actual floor traders, friends of mine, but they were like extras. They put them in there to fill up. I think that thing was filmed in the uh, the uh, orange juice pit in the world in the commodity exchange. But anyway, at that last scene, uh, these guys Duke and Duke, they thought they had. Um, the crop report so they thought they had inside information but really Eddie Murphy was turning the tables on these guys and they knew that what the the true crop report was and so like the the Duke and Duke brothers the owners of this big commodity firm they had their brokers bidding up the price of orange juice because they thought the report was going to be bullish they were told that the the information in the report was going to be bullish so they were buying they were buying the pit was going crazy Orange juice prices were going up, were going up, and then everybody turns to the TV set when the, the uh, USDA, the Department of Agriculture, releases this uh, the uh, report, and Eddie Murphy and his his uh, co you know conspirator in this, they were selling the entire rally because they knew the report was going to be bearish, and then they released the crop report. And the crop report was like, there's going to be an overabundance, a huge supply of orange crop. And everything started crashing back down and it was pandemonium. And that was like today. And every Fed meeting, really, like you get this move before the Fed and then it reverses. And I said to a friend of mine, you know, I said, the market was up right after the Fed meeting. And I said, watch Powell come in at the, uh, you know, at the press conference and, and dump all over it. And... and that's exactly what happened and went down 500 points. But again, I started out by saying, and believe me on this, you, you know, th this is going to be, uh, that down move today is going to be recovered. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets recovered by Friday. Uh, we got a positive month in November. And, you know, these, these fiscal flows, these income transfers, I mean, th these are serious, serious, significant things. And this is the reason why... You know, this is the sixth rate hike. Um, the Atlanta Fed is raising its economic uh, GDP forecast for the fourth quarter. I mean, we've had five rate hikes coming into this one today. The economy has turned around from two quarters of, of uh, contraction, which was entirely due to what? You guys know, I've been telling you, the, the almost two trillion that was taken away by the fiscal cuts, the spending cuts, now we stabilize, we're back in growth in the third quarter, and we're going to have even faster growth in the fourth quarter. And again, the, the big income transfers haven't even started yet. I mean, this, this $11 billion in the first four weeks on T-bills, you know, that, that's peanuts, man. That's peanuts. 
Wait till these longer dated treasury securities start to mature and roll over with the higher coupon and then you have an elevated level of fiscal transfers. I mean this is this is classic you know this is like what happened in Reagan's first term. All right? This is like what happened in Reagan's first term and it was this was the the kickoff of basically what was the greatest bull market I think in history. I, I you know and it was it was all income interest income transfers and that's what's happening right now. But the monetarists, you know, as I've explained or tried to explain so many times, they see only one side of the equation. To them, rate uh, hikes or rate adjustments, they only see one side of it. It's, you know, and when you talk about rate hikes to them, that is unequivocally negative to them. Absolutely. Un Look, it's one thing, you know, if you were selling the market or taking profits or moving to cash in March before the Fed, uh, started to do this because yes, th there is a discounting effect in the initially from rate hikes because it, it reduces the net present value of uh, you know future investments because of the higher cost of, of capital. But then you know you reach a point of diminishing returns, and that's where we are right now. So if you were selling in March, if you were selling in May, you know even if you were selling in, in, in June. But like now, each successive rate hike, I just did a spreadsheet. I mean, you, they could go 1%. They could go 1% in December. They could go 1% in February. They could go 1% in, uh, uh, what was the next one after that, March. It's still diminishing impact from those first rate hikes. But the other side of that is it's, a, it's an acceleration in those income transfers. And that's, you know that is totally totally being ignored so you could ignore me you could sell you could move to cash you could get out of the market you could say that you know that that's of course that's up to you I, I don't decide what you do I'm just telling you that that would be a foolish move that that's would absolutely be a foolish move you should not do that and um, you know there's there's a big I would say the, the, the forward environment is, you know, as long as we stay out of World War III, which some people say we're already in it, uh, but, you know, and I hate to bring that back into the, into the equation, but that's a serious, that's a real and a serious threat. Uh, but speaking just, if I'm speaking now just on the, the economic environment, it's very positive. And, you know, it, it's, it's suicide, it's financial suicide to be selling on these rate hikes. I mean, it's just, you know, you're selling into diminishing returns and you're completely um, excluding yourself from participating in what's going to be a very powerful upside as a result. And you could look, I mean, there's plenty of other examples, if you don't believe me, I mean, if you look at rate hikes in other countries, even that have high inflation, the stock market in those countries in, in local currency has been absolutely the best investment uh, to protect your purchasing power. I mean, if you look at Argentina, if you look at Turkey, I mean, it is absolutely, those markets have counteracted the negative impact from inflation and, and um, monetary policy, bad monetary policy. I mean, stocks are a good hedge against all this. I know it, it may sound hard to um, believe right now uh, because we have all this volatility. And I know like people look at a day like today and it freaks them out and they get scared. You know, that's not my problem. I mean, you, you have to try to control your emotions and you have to try to think, um, you know, rationally and understand all the elements that are involved here. And if you go along with a very, you know, um, one-sided view, then you're setting yourself up for major disappointment. Anyway, that's it for today. That's all I want to say about the Fed. Uh, and um, we'll see what happens. All right, everybody. Take care. Bye.